welcome. welcome you all to his own list and the holy marriages daily call uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, um, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory shall be uh, So today is a very auspicious day. Today is appearance day of um, Shilahidas Thakur, and uh, he is, as you all know, that he is the Namacharya uh, in our moment, um, in our sampradaya. And uh, I'm assuming, uh, Maharaj, we are we are going to talk about uh, Haridas Thakur today. Uh, you're on mute, Maharaj. Today is the disappearance. Oops, sorry, I made a mistake. And there's no, there's no record of his appearance anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Would you like me to share anything or? Uh... Um. Let's see. Well, let's see. Uh, go to uh, Chaitanya Charita. Rita. Yes. Uh, Auntie Leela. Chapter 11. Yeah, just bring up the first verse. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Namami Haridasam Tam Chaitanya Tam Chatat Pragam Prabhum Samstikam Apiyat Murtim Swanke Kritvam Nanartha Yaha Translation, let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Haridas Thakur and his master, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who danced with the body of Haridas Thakur on his lap. You can go down a series of verses. Go down to, um, you know, keep going. Just keep going. Keep going. You just keep going down the page. Let me see here. Don't don't move anything right now. Stay in one place for a while. Uh, chair number nineteen. Uh, okay, next verse. Keep going. Next verse. Uh, okay, here. Here you go. Stop there. Number 24. Okay. Whoops. You keep you got to listen to what I say instead of just bouncing around the page. Uh, number, I think you went too far. Number 23. Okay, stop there. Okay, so we'll speak a little bit about Srila Haridas Thakur. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes, Maharaj, I can hear you clearly. I, I, I guess everyone can, yes. Okay. So um, it goes back to the pastime of Krishna and Vrindavan when Lord Brahma, not knowing the real identity of Lord Sri Krishna, uh, stole calves and cowherd boys. In, in order to see the power of Lord Krishna. And Krishna bewildered Lord Brahma in so many ways to show him that your power is not 
even one single type of drop in, create, in, in relationship to me. And so Krishna bewildered Brahma. Not only did he bewilder him, but he showed him his own opulence and expanding the cowherd boys and calves and so many different uh, manifestations, at least three different manifestations, which just to humble Lord Brahma. Brahma became quite proud, thinking that he has so much influence. He, he comes from the body of Lord you know, Garbhodaksai Vishnu. Obviously, he's a great personality with great amounts of knowledge. He was the head of our son Kodaya. He's also the first person that was delivered the information on how to expand the next millennium after the after the interim for a period where the living entities stay within the body of the Lord. And so now um, Brahma is acting a little bit um, outside of his intelligence and in trying to bewilder Lord Krishna, although he not, he's not completely aware who that personality is. And um, Krishna foils all of him and humbles Brahma. And as it's described, Brahma comes before the Lord in a very contrite and very repentant mood and offers prayers explaining he didn't know who I didn't know who you were and uh, please forgive me and but Krishna was not so much uh, interested in hearing the prayers of Lord Brahma because Krishna was disturbed in his leelas playing with his friends by Brahma so he wanted to get back with that but he, he gave some time to Brahma and at the end of the prayers Brahma actually said you know he said that uh, well, you know, my problem is I'm Lord Brahma, and therefore I have a tendency to become proud. So please, my dear Lord, in your next manifestation of your appearance on, on this planet, please allow me to become part of your entourage, but give me a very low position, something completely insignificant. And the Lord granted that, and that was the birth of Srila Haridas Thakur. So Haridas Thakur was born in a Hindu society, but in the Muslim family. And he was considered to be an outcast. The actual birth of her, the actual date of his birth is not known. And no one is actually speculating on it either because it's so lost to any forms of speculation. Well, we know that, that he was born in an Islamic family, and therefore he was considered to be an outcast. Um, and uh, in his, uh, so he took birth, and uh, he was always marginalized because of his birth in the, what we say, the formal Hindu society. Of course, of course, that is not our philosophy that uh, we minimize a person according to birth, but that is the secular mood of the Western, of the uh, Hindu society, is to see uh, according to birth, just like the whole problem in India, the people are born in certain families which are elevated in caste and think that they're better and more privileged than others. <laughs> but that is simply my delusion. And that is actually envy. So but the bird but Lord, but Haridas Thakur is three persons in one. It's not just Lord Brahma. There is a story where Rachika Muni asked his son, whose name was Haridas, to uh, get some Tulsi leaves so he could prepare them for his worship. And Chika Muni was doing regular worship and he wanted his son to get some Tulsi leaves. So his son Haridas secured some Tulsi leaves, but he failed to wash them. And he gave them for the worship when unwashed. 
And uh, Ruchika Muni became very upset with his son. He said, you are a Malecha, you should take birth in a Malecha family. So he cursed his son and that Haridas became another feature of the existence of Shiva Haridas Dakor. So there are two people in one in that same body, Lord Brahma, or Chikamuni, and also there's a third element, which is the spirit of Shila Balad Maharaj. So Haridas Thakur was also known for his compassion, which was exemplary in the life of Pallad Maharaj. And that was the element of Pallad Maharaj that also entered into the body of Shila Haridas Thakur. I'll read something. Yes, sir. Oh, let me see here. Now, and this goes on to explain how Lord Brahma was forgiven by the Lord. And he uh, prayed for low birth. Yeah. He felt his problem was the pride, high position, and his great intelligence. Um, therefore, uh, it's also interesting to understand that no matter what material qualifications you have, Many times they can be a source of becoming proud, such as birth in the good family, good bodily beauty, good intelligence, great amounts of wealth. All of these things can cause pride into the heart, into the mind of a devotee. The devotee should know that these are simply gifts of the Lord. And one should not become proud of them. One should Receive them as the mercy of the Lord and use them in the service of the Lord and not become, not to use them to place themselves in a better position or to consider oneself uh, more advanced than others. It says here, since he was born in a Muslim family, Haridas Dakur could not enter the temple of Jagannath due to the temple restriction. Nevertheless, he was recognized by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Sri Ramachandra. It's interesting to note, Haridas Thakur never considered himself, Haridas Thakur considered himself unfit to enter the Jagannath temple. And it's interesting to note that the deities of Jagannath, Baladeva, and Subhadra were originally by Lord Brahma himself. <laughs> When during the time of uh, during the time of uh, uh, King Indrajuna, Brahma did the installation of Jagannath Baladev Subhadra in the Jagannath Temple, and at the time the temple was built. So that same Lord Brahma, who now has appeared as Sri Hari Das Thakur, is not allowed in his own temple. Uh, but here it says here. Chaitanya could have personally taken Haridas into the temple if he wished, but the Lord did not, did not want to disturb the constant popular custom. The Lord asked his servants simply to look at the Vishnu wheel on top of the temple and offer obeisances. This means that if one is not allowed into the temple, there are certain personalities who do not fit into the Hindu culture, are not allowed, and one can enter the temple by looking at the wheel outside the temple, and it's good at seeing the deity itself. Lord Chaitanya would come every day and bring Shiva Haridas that course of food. Here it mentions um, Haridas Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, 
when Haridas was in a very apparently sick condition, he said, "What? What? Are, can you ascertain what ascertain what is your disease?" Haridas replied, "My disease is that I cannot complete my rounds." It's Prabhupada's purport. If one cannot complete the fixed number of rounds he has assigned, he should be considered to be in a diseased condition of spiritual life. Shila Haridas Thakur is called Namacharya. Of course, we cannot imitate Haridas Thakur, but everyone must chant the prescribed number of rounds. In our Krishna consciousness movement, we have fixed 16 rounds as a minimum so that Westerners will not feel burdened. These 16 rounds must be chanted and chanted loudly so that one can hear himself and others. Go on to the next verse. From here. Now that you become old, the Lord said, you may reduce the number of rounds you chant daily. You are already liberated, therefore, you need not follow the regular principles strictly. Purport. Unless one comes to the platform of spontaneous love of God, he must follow the regular principle. The core Haridas was the living example of how to follow the regular principle. And we also hear from the word from Raghunath Vasco Swami example. Um, um, Sakya, this is also by Srinivasataria and the Sad Goswami Astrakhan. The Goswamis, especially Raghunatha, strictly followed the regular two principles, even though they were above the regular two principles. The first regular thing is that one must chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra loudly enough so that one can hear himself, and one must vow to chant a fixed number of rounds. Uh, Raghunatha Goswami was ideal in that. He did a fixed number of rounds. He also bowed down to the Lord and his devotees a fixed number of times. So he kept a regulated counting of his um, worship. So the chanting of the, our rounds is the most important part of our practice in spiritual life. And the Prabhupada also illustrated that. So one should be very serious and diligent to allow for sufficient time, especially in the early morning hours, for the chanting of our 16 rounds. And then um, this is the foundation by which we develop our Krishna conscious knowledge. If we are not following this principle, we will never make any tangible advancement in Krishna consciousness, nor will we be able to stay fixed in any, any service. One must carefully, regularly, with attention and as much devotion, and as it says here, loudly enough so you can hear. One must chant in that way. So this loud chanting means audible chanting, that chanting where you hear. Uh, it's not that we chant silently or we chant and we're just murmuring and we don't hear anything. We, the lips are moving, but there's no sound coming out. Or one should hear the sound. The sound has to go into the ear channel and shake up the mind a little and uh, awaken it up to spiritual reality. And uh, also, if it's chanted regularly, it will cause one to dance in ecstasy if one is chanting nicely. So one should be very serious in the executing of our chant. So how he does that core, what is he illustrating here? He's trying to tell us the importance of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And then he is called Namacharya. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya designated him as a person who teaches and not only practices the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He chanted uh, 33,000, no, I'm sorry, 333,333 names a day which is 192 rounds every day. On these, he also preached Krishna consciousness too, the remaining of the time. And so he was fixed in the process of chanting. He was chanting on the, on the uh, pseudonym platform. That means on the clear, clear platform, when one is absorbed fully in the chanting of the holy name. And 
there is just two people, just the name and you constantly associating with each other through the sound vibration. And that, and that is what we should strive for to be absorbed in chanting Krishna's only name. Uh, there are many wonderful stories in the life of Shiva Hari Das Thakur. But here we see, uh, since today is his disappearance, then we'll speak a little bit about his disappearance. We'll go on to the next verse. And we'll read some more. And Lord Chaitanya says, your role in this incarnation is to deliver the people of in general. You have sufficiently preached the glories of the Holy One in this world. He's known as the Chatnamacharya because he preached the glories of the holy name. Confirms that Haridas Thakur is an incarnation of Lord Brahma. Bhakti Siddhanta says that advanced devotees help the Supreme Lord in their mission, and such devotees are personal associates incarnate by the will of the Lord. And when the Lord comes, he brings some of his entourage with him to assist him and to help spread the glories of Krishna consciousness. And so here, the Lord incarnates by his own will and by his own will, competent devotees also incarnate to help him. Now, in Paridas, that is an incarnation of Lord Brahma. And other devotees are likewise incarnations who help in the process of the Lord's mission. So this is what it means to be a devotee of Krishna consciousness is to assist the Lord in spreading his glories and spreading the process of pure devotion and service. So this becomes a feature of the devotee's uh, concern. The devotee never thinks, well, I'm, I'm happy, I'm chanting, I'm reading, I'm doing some service, that's all I like to do. And the devotee understood that because of someone has, has uh, offered some mercy to me, I have become a devotee. Now let me also reciprocate and give that mercy to others to help others attain to that position also. A devotee always wants to spread the glories of the no Lord, name, fame, qualities, pastimes, entourage, everywhere into, uh, into the society because this is the thing that is most needed. As Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati would say, uh, there's only one thing lacking in the world and that is Krishna consciousness. That is the thing that is most needed. Everything else is already here. Okay, next verse. The Lord concluded, now, therefore, please reduce the fixed number of rounds you chant on the mantra. Haridas Thakur replied, kindly hear my plea. I was born in an inferior family. My body is most abominable. I'm always engaged in low work. Therefore, I'm the lowest and most condemned of men. I am unseeable or untouchable, and you have accepted me as your servant. This means that you have delivered me from the hellish condition and raised me to the vicarious of conscience. So you see, such a great soul, but he never considers himself worthy of even being seen or even being touched. This is the natural humility of a great soul, especially in this case, the Rahari Das one. My dear Lord, you're fully independent. Lord, you act according to your will. You cause the whole world to dance and act as you like, it's glorifying the Lord. My dear Lord, you, by your mercy, you have made me dance in many ways. For example, I offered the strata, I was offered the strata patra, which you had should have been offered to first class Romans. I ate from me, even though I was born with family. Of meteors and continue. I had one desire for a very long time. I think that quite soon, my Lord, you will bring to a close your pastimes in this material world. 
I wish that you not show me this closing chapter of your past life. Before that comes, kind of let my body fall down in your presence. So here, it's interesting. Uh, uh, the devotees don't want to experience the disappearance of the Lord, nor do they also, they also feel unhappy when they also have to experience the disappearance of other great personalities too. So Haridas is feeling like that. Vice, you know, don't show me your pastimes of departure. Therefore, let me allow me to leave before you show your closing chapter. Natural humility. I wish to catch your lotus like feet upon my head and see your moon like face. With my tongue, I shall tell your holy name, see Krishna Chaitanya, that is my desire. Kindly let me give up my body and this This is really amazing when you think about it. And you'll see as we go on, the amazement starts to become really clear. Oh, most merciful Lord, if by your mercy it is possible, kindly grant my desire. Haridas Thakur wants to leave. He wants to die in the presence of the Lord. He asks for the Lord's permission. Please let this low ball body fall down before you. You can make possible this perfection of all my desires. Really, a really powerful prayer. Haridas said, Lord says, my dear Haridas, Krishna is so merciful that we must execute whatever you want. <laughs> this, is the, this is how the Lord sees his pure devotee. He simply fulfills their desires. But whatever happens is mine is all due to your association. It is not fitting for you to go away and leave me behind. The Lord is saying, don't leave me. Whatever happiness is mine is due to you. If you go, I will be unhappy. The love for the Lord, the Lord. Catching the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Haridas, that course, said, my Lord, do not create an illusion. Although I'm so fallen, you must certainly share with this mercy. Nice loving discussion between them. And here, again, Haridas shows his humility. My Lord, there are many respectable personalities, millions of devotees who are fit to sit on my head. They are all helpful in their pastimes. He glorifies all the other people, considering him to be the lowest. My Lord, if an insignificant insect like me dies, what is the loss? If an ant dies, where is the loss to the material world? So humble. My Lord, you are always affectionate to your devotees. I am just an imitation devotee. But nevertheless, I wish that you will fulfill my desire. This is my expectation. Because he had to perform his noon duties, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got up to leave, but it was settled that the following day after he saw Lord Jagannath would return to visit. Okay, the Lord leaves to go to his noon duties and that. After when he, when he comes back very hastily, we see how he does that for. Now Lord Chaitanya is with all the other devotees and they're off, they offer respects to the Lord. And Haridas has a chance to offer respects to everyone. And this is interesting. The Lord says, my dear Haridas, what is the news? Haridas replied, 
my Lord, whatever mercy you can bestow upon me. This is an interesting statement. So when people ask you, well, what is the news or what's new? And you can talk about how the Lord has been merciful to you. That would be the, uh, the front page headlines of the most important newspaper. On hearing this, then they began chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and Bhakteswara, the chief dancer, began dancing. Sukhdarana, everyone began chanting and dancing in the presence of Haridas. In front of all of the devotees, Ramananda Roy and Sarabhama Bhattacharya. Mahaprabhu began to describe holy attributes of the Haridas Thakur. This is amazing what you'll hear now. As he described the transcendental attributes of Haridas Thakur, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu seemed to possess five mouths. The more he described, the more his great happiness increased. This is also interesting that when we actually glorify a devotee, we actually become happy. Because devotees are glorifiable. After hearing of the qualities, transcendental qualities of all the devotees were struck with wonder. They offer respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of Srila Haridas. Everyone was amazed to hear his words. Here's the, here's the, uh, the finale here. Haridas Thakur made Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sit down in front of him. And then he fixed his eyes like two bumblebees on the lotus face of the Lord. He held the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on his heart and then took the dust of the feet of all the devotees present and put it on his head. He began to chant the holy name of Sri Krishna Chaitanya again and again. As he drank the sweetness of the face of the Lord, tears constantly glided down from his eyes. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Over and over he began chanting. Tears flowing from his eyes. While chanting the holy name Sri Krishna Chaitanya, he gave up his air of life and then left his body. Whoa, by his own will, he left his body. Seeing the wonderful death of Srila Hari Dastakura by his own will, which was just like the great mystic yogis, everyone remembered the passing away of grandfather Bhishma Dev. There was a tumultuous noise, and they all chanted the holy names, Hari and Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became overwhelmed with ecstatic love. Just seeing how Srila Hari Das Thakur, and his own will, left the world. The Lord raised the body of Hari Das and placed it on his lap, and then he began to dance in the courtyard in great ecstatic love. There's many beautiful drawings of this in the uh, Samadhi Mandir of Shiva Haridas Thakur in Jagannath Puri, <clears throat> where you see the Lord, and he, he's, he has the body of Haridas and he's dancing. Because of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstatic love, all the devotees were helpless. And in ecstatic love, they also began to dance and chant congregationally. It was a glorious departure. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced for some time, and then Sri Dhamdar informed him the other 
about the other rituals of the body of Srila Haridana. Man may raise his body on a, a carrier and it was taken to the sea, accompanied by Harina. Lord Chaitanya danced in front along with Bhakreshwar Pandit and other devotees chanted and danced behind. He bathed his body. The Lord bathed the body of Haridas and considered that this sea has now become a great pilgrimage site. And right where that bathing of the body was, right near that spot, there is a Samadhi Mandir that was erected in honor of the disappearance of Srila Haridas. Of course, you can go there. It's a wonderful place to go. You can sit and chant Japa so nicely there. And there are many altars inside where you can take darshan. Um, Shiva Haridas Thakur, um, Lord Nityananda, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Adelaide Chari. It's a very big, big place. Quite big. I will be understanding this. They drank the water from his feet and then they smeared remnants of sandalwood pulp all over his body. They also brought, as we, it'll go on to explain, they brought garlands and Mahaprasadam and also placed it on the body. Here I mentioned the silken rope, food and cloth were placed on the body, sandalwood pulp. Remnants for Lord Jagannath. And the, the congregational Akrishwar Pandit is the best of all dancers. With the transcendental hands, Sri Chaitanya personally covered the body of Haridas with sand, saying, Haribo! Haribo! He constructed a platform and protected it with fencing. There's one verse I want to get to, which is the culmination of this whole thing. They all danced and chanted, and the chanting of the, the names of Lord Hari roared throughout this, the universe and filled it with transcendental sound. Since Lord Chaitanya bathed in the sea, they were swimming and playing in water in great jubilation. You can see the, the passing of such a great personality is a celebration. It is not something lamentable. You know, it's interesting because when our dear Jan, Janaki Nath also passed, I was there for the whole ceremony, and it appeared like a celebration. <laughs> when great personalities leave the world, they go back to the spiritual world. Well, we feel a loss and we sometimes lament and also become over emotional about the disappearance of these great personalities. But for them, they are attaining the spiritual world, so it's glory. Therefore, it's a means for celebration. Continue. And then Lord Chaitanya was starting to beg for uh, to shopkeepers to honor a great feast in honor of the disappearance. And uh, so he went from place to place. The Lord was act acting in the role of a beggar, just to beg the alms so they could prepare a nice feast for the, the departure of Shiva Haridas. And then shopkeepers came forward with baskets of prasadam. But Srubh Damodar didn't feel that the Lord should do that, so he sat down 
and we told them each you know, then the next we gave we instructed the shopkeepers in the next groups and see. Okay, first he sends Lord Chaitanya back to his residence. He delivered, he told each of the shopkeepers to deliver four pounds of prashadam from each and every item that they have. And then they had a big feast and different persons carried it. We continue on. There's one particular verse I'm looking for. I hear it des describes the feast and it's a really nice description of how Lord Chaitanya sat everybody down and enlisted a few persons to help him distribute Prashana. The Lord was so enthusiastic about the departure of the Haridans, so happy. And he did everything himself. <laughs> and then these men assisted Lord Chaitanya. Okay, keep going. We want to get to this one verse that I'm really looking for. You can, just, you can read about the feast, how the Lord kept filling up everybody's plate. Here it is. Okay, here it is. This is a benediction. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave, gave it back. Anyone who has seen the festival of Srila Haridas, of course, passing away. Anyone who has chanted and danced here. Anyone who has offered sand on the body of Haridas. And anyone who has joined this festival to partake of the prasadam will receive the favor of Krishna very soon. This is such wonderful power in seeing Srila Haridas and Pura. The Lord gives this really powerful benediction. And everyone who's seen the festival. In other words, you know, every year they perform this festival in honor of Srila Haridas. And so if you go, this, this benediction applies to anyone who goes and uh, takes part in the festival of Haridas that for passing the day. Here, now the Lord is really opening his heart up. Being merciful upon me, Krishna gave me the association of Haridas Thakur. Being an independent in his desires, he has now broken that association. When Haridas Thakur wanted to leave this material world, it was not within my power to detain him. Our uh, Lord is speaking with such humility. Simply by his will, Hari Dastakur could give up his life and go away, exactly like Van Bishma did. He previously died simply by his own desires. Here is the beautiful verse I was looking for. Haridasa Achli Piti Devi Siromani Kahavina Ratnasuna Ayilo Vini Haridas Thakur was the crown jewel on the head of this world. Without him, this world is now bereft of its valuable world. And Lord Shaitani is speaking from his heart, glorifying Haridas as the crown jewel on the head of the world. This world is no longer as its, its valuable jewel. It is no longer present to inspire us in his association and to glorify the holy name. But for us, he is still present in his deity form and the words glorifying him and the remembrance of him. And especially 
And when we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we can pray to Srila Haridas for my dear Haridas, please be merciful and give me the treasure of the chanting of the holy name of Lord Sri Krishna. This is my only prayer. This is a beautiful verse that ends this particular uh, narration. Okay, so we can stop here. Uh, one more verse. Lord Chaitanya said, All glories to Harida and chant the holy name of Hari. Saying this, the Lord personally began to dance. Okay, we can stop here. So here's a little bit about the glories of this the most dear to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, every dear, every very dear to all of the devotees, always humble, always tolerant, and always enthusiastic, not only to chant, but to spread the glories of chanting everywhere. It said that he would chant his rounds in 333. 233, and he would spend at least four to five hours a day, aside from that, preaching the glories of Krishna consciousness to the general population. But he's an emblem of pure devotion, pure compassion, pure the qualities of a great devotee. So our movement centers around focuses our center around chanting of the holy name of the Lord. So therefore, Hari Das Thakur is mentioned in our prayers every day when we say the Prem Dwani prayers. Namacharya Sila Hari Das Thakur Ki Jai. We say that every day, every time, not only every day, many times a day when we say the Prem Dwani prayers, we honor Sila Hari Das so today, take some time, hear more about Shiva Haridas, read about him, then go deeper into your practice of Krishna consciousness by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his pure devotee Shiva Haridas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. It was so nectarian class. Very nice to hear the departure of Ashila Das Thakur. And uh, it's so beautifully started from with Brahma Bimohan Leela. Uh, and uh, I did not know that uh, he, he was three person in one. That was uh, Richik Muni's son, um, Haridas, Brahma, and the spirit of Prahlad Maharaj. So thank you that, so much for sharing that with us, Guru Maharaj. Uh, devotees, if you have any questions, comments, realizations, and if you want to glorify Haridas Thakur, please unmute yourself. And it would be really nice to take your darshan if you can keep your cameras on as well. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji, can I? Yes, please go ahead, Asha Mataji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Haridas Thakur, Guru Maharaj. I had just shared a link with uh, Mataji uh, about Haridas Thakur, uh, some nectarian words that he had uh, said, Guruji, Guru Maharaj had uh, said by himself. So I just wanted to share with everybody. So I sent Mataji the link so that she can read. And it's a very short one, but it's there are very nectarian words. Okay. Yes, I will share the screen so that uh, actually read it, just read it. Okay. Diving into the uh, fathomless ocean of uh, Chetan Chantamrita, we found some precious rare rubies in the form of Haridas Thakur's direct words. Although Haidas Thakur is an intimate, eternal servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he speaks so humbly about himself. His words reveal the nature of the true, truly unpretentious 
devotee who has been blessed by the constant loving association of Sri Harinam Prabhu. By reading and hearing within the walls of our heart, the sacred vibrations emanating from the prema-filled heart of Haridas Thakur, we may someday yes. manifest that type of genuine humility which attracts Sri Harinam Prabhu to come live in our hearts. Kirtanaya Sadahari. In addition, we have included a brief but powerful emanation on the holy name of the Namachari Shila Haridas Thakur. Humility. Haridas Thakur said, I'm the most sinful and lowest among men. I'm low born, ab uh, abominable person and I have no qualification to go anywhere near the Jagannath Mandir. Oh Mahaprabhu, please do not touch me or I'm most fallen and untouchable. I'm the lowest of mankind. And we should, when we read these and when we hear these, we should not think that this is the actual reality. This is the, the nature of a great soul. We understand that they are the most exalted, the most worshipable, and the most qualified. But at the same time, the mood of a great soul is they, they never think themselves in that. So although reading about their humility spoken by them, we should not believe that these words are actually a description of themselves. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for letting us know this. This is very important while you know we are reading this. Yeah. Nam Tattva, in an assembly of Brahmins discussing the glories of Shri Krishna's holy name, Haridas Thakur revealed the real truth of Nam Tattva. Nam Charishila Haridas Thakur said, the twin benedictions of liberation and the destruction of sins, pap, Papashaya, Mokshahaya, are not the true result of chanting the holy name. The actual result of chanting is that it produces prema, static divine love for the lotus feet of Krishna. Namira Pele Kena Peda Kena Pade Prema Upjaya. Liberation and extinction of sins are two concomitant byproduct of chanting. Is it okay if I continue, Maharaj? Should I continue, Maharaj? Yeah. yeah. Devotees of Krishna, however, are not concerned with any of the five forms of liberation. They are experiencing such transcendental bliss from serving Krishna, Bhakti Shukha, that Mukti is completely, extremely insignificant. Mukti iti tucha. Devotees will never accept it. One can never understand the truth and glories of the holy name merely by logic and argument. Prabhupada would say that simply by practicing devotional service, one is already on the liberated platform. Therefore, we don't strive for liberation because simply by Krishna's arrangement, the devotee is already liberated. And so they don't aspire for any type of mukti. When there, is, there, is, there is a bhakti type of mukti also to live on the same planet as the Lord, to have the same quality, the same features as the Lord, to have the same uh, opulences as the Lord. Um, these are not attractive to the devotee who is fixed in devotional service because they consider these things simply insignificant compared to the happiness that one is experiencing by engaging in the devotion, devotional service. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, so I'm continuing from there. Just consider the example of the rising sun which immediately dissipates at the deep darkness of night. As the sun begins to rise, even before it is visible, it dissipates the darkness of night and immediately destroys the fear, fear, I'm not sure if I can pronounce this, Chara, Preta, and Raknasa. Uh, yeah, I mean, the ghosts and different types of beings host and demons. <laughs> Thank they're you. All, they're all lower beings. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, after sunrise, everything is clearly visible and everyone begins performing his daily rites. 
and religious activities. Similarly, when one begins to chant the holy name, his sins are diminished, and as his, he continues chanting, he achieves Krishna Prem. So I'm continuing. Once chanting of Krishna's holy name completely finishes one's material bondage to the endless cycle of birth and death, samsara, all glories to Harinam, which fills the whole world with auspiciousness. Jayati Jagat Mang Mangalam Harinama. Chaitanya Charitamita. Uh, 3.3 3, uh, 178 to 207. Nice description of the glories of the holy name. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ashwin. Thank you, Maharaj. And also, Maharaj, I sent a mail uh, that, that between the Vyasa Puja Day and the uh, Holy Day also, got an opportunity to do a seva. Uh, the detention center here in Toronto and the women's detention center here, two centers have given the permission to distribute some books, the holy books, Maharaj. So this is the seva that being a Vyas Puja day, I could offer at your holy feet and for the not, we're not we're not speaking about anything about it. There's no such thing as Vyasa Puja today and all this stuff. Stick to stick to Shila Hari Das Thakur. We're not talking about me at all. Okay, Marat. Shri Mataji, yes, you can go ahead. Thanks, Sasha Mataji. Thank you. Yes. Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Haridas Thakur. Guru Maharaj, as we were glorifying and listening to the glorification of Haridas Thakur, he is the Namacharya. Our whole process is based on chanting the holy name. It is the Yuga Dharma for this age of Kali to chant the holy name. And because he is Namacharya, uh, is it is it appropriate for all temples to also have, uh, you know, how the Guru Parampara is uh, placed on the temple altar? We see the Guru Parampara and we see the six Goswamis, but we don't see Haridas Thakur. We don't see Haridas Thakur. And I think it's so important for us to see Haridas Thakur because he is Nam Acharya. He represents the pure chanting of the holy name. And it's so inspiring for any of us, even when we see the Murti of Haridas Thakur, we all feel so inspired. There's so, nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong in placing his picture there. We also place his deity on the altar sometimes. It's usually up to do that. Right. Right. But, you know, everyone follows what Srila Prabhupada has given us. And so they do that. But if you want to add Srila Haridas, and there are many temples who have his deity on the altar, and some also have pictures. So we shouldn't, it don't find, it's not, not good to find fault with the temples. Just accept whatever's there, and then if you want to add something, you can also add something. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shri Devi Mataji. Um, uh, Maharaj, I found some pictures of Srila Hidas Thakur Samadhi in Jagannath Puri. Is it okay if I share on the screen? Mm -hmm. So this is the place, Maharaj, uh, you mentioned in your uh, talk uh, about the Samadhi, which is in Jagannath Puri. Yeah, that's the in, that's inside the Samadhi Mandir. Yes. Oh, this is really nice. This so, is the actual Samadhi, yes. Yeah, and this is the enclosure for the previous. And this is the outside. The next one is the outside. And then you'll see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing. And then there's another other pictures of the outside of the mandir. Here is the inside of the mandir, inside of that little shrine. It's inside. This and one, Maharaj? 
this, this is the shrine that's inside the mandir where he actually his where his uh, body is is laid to rest there that's the spot yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and there are many many pictures many many illustrations of the whole pastime of Lord Chaitanya and the devotees celebrating the disappearance of Shiva Haridas. Of course, it's all over the walls. You'll see that picture of the Samadhi on the left just there where they dug a hole and then Lord Chaitanya is personally placing the sand on his body. And you can see some pictures of the inside there bathing there's also a bathing picture there. I've been there a few times, and every time I go in there, I find Japa is very, very wonderful. I and mean, you just want to continue to stay there and chant. Yes, Maharaj, we were there two months back, and it was so touchy and really. Um, when we sat there all with, you know, Nath Prabhu's family and us, um, it was uh, um, just remembering Haridas Thakur and sitting and chanting right there in front of him, his samadhi. It's, it was a different experience, just uh, lost ships and the beautiful deities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda as well there. And Advaita. Yeah, and Advaita Acharya, yes. Yes, my we, we yes, all yes, the temple, yes. See where that lady is on the side here. That's where the three altars are. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I can't altars. find the picture of the deities, otherwise, it would have been nice to show on the. Mm -hmm. I think, is this the one? This is. Uh, that's the deity of. Uh, let's see, who is that? Yeah. That is, uh, I think that's Nityananda. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So these are nice pictures just to meditate on um, uh, Srila Das Thakur and uh, on his samadhi, basically. Yeah. Very beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, Namrata Mataji. Uh, your hands were up. Yes, you can ask a question. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I was thinking uh, when you mentioned about uh, Mahaprabhu begging alms for uh, Haridas Thakur uh, in one of the lectures from Radhanath Swami, uh, I heard that he was mentioning that uh, he he associated with the um, a yogi. I forgot his name at present, but uh, he was quite heighted and he was mentioning something like that. Um, Kailash Babaji, I am not 100% sure, but um, he said that he learned, he, he learned from him that how to beg arms with integrity. So I was just wondering what is uh, the meaning of the statement when you say uh, begging the arms with integrity? You know, it's not like you demand it. Hare Krishna, I cannot hear you. Yeah, it's not a matter of demanding. It's a matter of humbly requesting others to offer something. So that just means the humility. He's just talking about the humility here. Without um, a false show of neediness, obviously someone who's begging is wanting something, but it shouldn't be like 
Well, I need, therefore you have to give because I am begging. <laughs> it shouldn't be a dramatic performance. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you see that there's a big dramatic performance when they beg. <clears throat> but that doesn't inspire people to give. Humility, integrity means keeping your own self worth, but at the same time, inviting others to offer something. In India, particularly, begging is considered to be a profession. When you do it in Western countries, it's considered to be some kind of, you know, Deficiency. You can't do anything else, so you're begging. That's the way it's understood. You invite others to take part in helping. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thanks, Namrata Mataji. Um, Maharaj, your internet is um, um, bandwidth is a bit low, so our voice is breaking a little bit. Um, um, and I hope Namrata Mataji have got the answer. We got we could hear it from our side, so that was okay. Uh, anyone else? Uh, any comments, questions? Realizations about chanting and praying to Haridas Thakur. Uh, so I have a question from um, 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 a nursing Lila uh, Mataji uh, Maharaj, and I'm just going to read it. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, regarding the Namrata Mataji's question, begging with integrity, could it be that one asks for arms, knowing his real position, being fully dependent on Krishna? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a nice, nice way to express it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Who, who said that? Uh, nursing Alila, Mataji. Nursing Alila. That's, that's, that's very nice, succinct, and to the point definition. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so if there is no other questions or comments, then we can maybe close the call, Maharaj, now. Okay, thank you very much. And also remember today and uh, take some opportunity to chat extra rounds today. Um, there is, um, this is chapter 11. And the uh, Sri Ma Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Anja Lila. If you go to chapter three, in the same Anja Lila, it's the glories of Srila Haridas Thakur. So you have two full chapters in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Chapter three and chapter 11 of Anja Lila. Uh, a lot. And the more you hear about these great souls, the more you become purified. And we also start to imbibe some of their qualities if we really meditate on, on their activities and how they, uh, how they sacrificed everything to glorify the Lord and to spread the glory of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. We'll see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow is uh, Madhra Purnima.